Hey scholars, it's good to be back with you. This is another in a series of videos about mathematics and today I want to talk to you about polar and rectangular plots. Now let's start with the basics. What's a plot? A plot is just a way of drawing a picture that shows the relationship between two sets of numbers. So let's say I have a column, two columns of numbers. I can plot one versus the other. And what we usually do is this. We draw two axes that are perpendicular to each other. Right? And there's a reason they're perpendicular. Okay, and we usually, look, we usually designate these X and Y. These could be anything. These could be A and B, blue and green, up and it doesn't matter. Traditionally, we call these X and Y. It's so traditional that sometimes X is, is sort of default refers to a horizontal axis and Y sometimes default refers to a vertical axis. That's okay, as long as you know that it's just a, a convention. It's not something, a rule that you have to uh, stick with. So if I have two numbers, two sets of numbers, three, four, I'll just make up some numbers, zero, zero, one, one. Okay, there's a, there's a row of numbers or a column of numbers and there's a column of numbers. As human beings, we're not very good at looking at lists of numbers and extracting meaning from them. We're much, much better at looking at pictures. So it makes good sense to try to turn that into a picture. Well, how do you do it? Let's call this X and let's call this Y. And we will plot these on perpendicular axes. So if my scale kind of looks like this here, that's probably close enough. There's, there's the origin. That's 0, 0. So 1, 0, I'll even label this as the origin. It's not actually a point there. Maybe do that. OK, there's the origin. That's 0, 0. So 0, 1, 2, 3. OK, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3 there. All right, so all we've done is we've made sort of a space, kind of a playing field, where these numbers are going to play. So let's get the first point x equals 1, y equals 0, right there. x equals 2, y equals 0, right there. x equals 3, y equals 1. I'll put the 4, I'll get my head out of your way here in a second. There we go. There's what it looks like now. Okay? This is more helpful a lot of times than this is. We're not very good at looking at pictures or looking at lists of numbers. We're much, much better at looking at pictures. Well, who thought of this? Well, guy who gets the credit for it is Rene Descartes. This is a long time ago, hundreds of years ago, realized you could do this. Now, there's a whole bunch of theory behind this, and there's some mathematical uh, rules that govern how you do plots, but that's not important here. What they basically boil down to is these two axes have to be perpendicular. Does it have to be 2D? Could there be a 3D plot? Sure. Okay, now I don't know how to draw 3D very well on this board. Usually what you wind up doing is something like this. And that suggests that this is coming out of the board. And there's a right hand rule. You don't have to follow the right hand rule, but we generally do. Take your right hand, okay, take X, rotate it into Y with your fingertips, and Z points out. Now, this is not mathematically rigorous. The mathematically rigorous arguments do show that the, the, the uh, cross product X and Y really is Z. There's a mathematical rule behind it, but the way we remember it is the right hand rule. Now, I'm left handed, so I can use the right hand rule and still write. So, this is the rectangular plot. This is the one we're all familiar with. If you've ever done plots on a piece of graph paper or Excel or whatever, this is second nature. We've all seen this before, mostly. So we got the rectangular part taken care of. Well, what's a polar plot? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. Instead of having x and y axes be perpendicular, you have circular axes. Okay, so the distance along this is r, and in this direction we'll call theta. Right? Now, traditionally we use Greek letters to stand for angles. So you see alpha, beta, theta, gamma, you know, those things an awful lot of the time. And it's just tradition. This could be anything. This could be x, y, z, blue, green, up, down, puppy, whatever you want. You put a smiley face there if you want. Traditionally, we use the Greek letters, the, uh, Greek letters to uh, uh, 
stand for angles most of the time. So R and theta is what you see most of the time. Just like you have an XY plot, you hear the term an XY plot refers to a Cartesian or rectangular plot, Cartesian because of Rene Descartes. Well, an, you hear R and theta used constantly, R being the radius and theta being an angle. Well, I mean, how does this work? Can you do this? Sure. Let's say you're in a field. Okay, here's just a field. And you're starting right there. So there is find young scholar right there. It needs to get to a point right here. Why? I don't know. They threw a football and the football's there. I don't know. For some reason, there's something interesting there. Maybe that's where your car is and this is a parking lot. Well, how do you get from here to here? This is the origin. It's where you're starting. And you're trying to go here. You need instructions. You need to know what the coordinates of that point are if you're going to do this. Well, you could do this. There's the direction in the uh, distance in the x direction. And I'll get my head out of your way here again in a second. And there's your distance in the y direction. So that point you can define as x, y. And you'll see this a lot. Okay? If, if this is, I don't know, 60 meters over and 40 meters up, x, y is going to equal 60, 40. Okay? So, no problem. This seems familiar. There's another way to do this. Let me clean this up. Same origin, same, there's your car, or the ball you lost or whatever. You could do it this way. Say, so go that far at that angle. That's, that's completely okay. That gets you the same place. Okay? That's just as valid. So, before we knew this point in polar coordinates was 60, 40. That's where, where the x and y position of that point is. How do I convert that to polar? Well, let's see, I think I could draw a triangle here, can I? There's x, there's y, there's theta, and there's the hypotenuse, which in this case will be r. Well, let's see if the Pythagorean theorem still holds. r is the square root of x squared plus y squared. Well, that's square root of 40 squared plus 60 squared. And if you work that out, I think it comes to 72.11. And I guess we'll call that in meters. All right, so there's one. Got that taken care of. Well, how do I find theta? Well, about the way you'd figure. This is, it turns out that y divided by x is tangent. So I can write tangent theta is y over x where theta is the inverse tangent of y over x. And if we work this out, this comes out to be 56.31 degrees, I think. Yeah, that's right. So this, this position could be defined in rectangular coordinates as 60 and 40. It can also be defined in polar coordinates as, you see, the radius was 72.11, I think. And the angle was 56 point, whoops, try that again, 56.31 degrees. You definitely want to put degrees in there so you know that's not radians. Last thing, why? Why? Why, why do this? I sense that some of you, when we get a set of polar coordinates like this, We're freaking out. There's no need. This is fine. This is a two-dimensional board. Because it's two-dimensional, it takes two numbers to describe where you are. If those numbers happen to be x and y, fine. If they happen to be r and theta, fine. So that still begs the question, why would you do this? We're conditioned to think in terms of r and theta. We're conditioned to think in terms of 
rectangular coordinates, and not for any mathematical reason. It's easy to draw graph paper, I guess, but you can find polar graph paper. Well, let's, let's, let's take an example. Equation for a circle is x squared plus y squared equals r squared in polar coordinates. So if I want to draw a circle, now instead of this being polar coordinates, this really is going to be x and y. Okay, and I'm going to draw a circle there. It's a really bad circle, but that's what you get here today. That's close enough for what we need. Where this is r. Well, how am I going to plot that? Well, let's see, let's solve for y of x. So y is going to be the square root of r squared minus x squared. Well, this could be positive or negative, right? Okay. Well, the positive one of that will give me the top half of the circle, and the negative will, be, will give me the bottom half of the circle. So there. That's really what you've got to plot in whatever your, your favorite plotting program is to make that. Well, it's not horrible, but that's not convenient. There, is there a better way to do this? Let me try something else. Instead of rectangular coordinates, now let's do this in polar coordinates. Take another circle here. Now the graph paper is circular. Okay, This, is, this isn't the circle. This is the graph paper. I want to draw a circle on it. In fact, let's go to a different color here. So maybe go to green. Alrighty. There's the circle I'm trying to draw on my circular graph paper. You know what the equation for this is? You know what r of theta is now? It's just r. That's it. That's the equation of a circle in polar coordinates. That's it. This is why you do this. Things that sometimes are difficult to do in Rectangular coordinates are sometimes really easy to do in polar coordinates. Right? That's the advantage. This is why you want to do this. One last thing. I told you before, you know, I, I don't know about you, I live in three-dimensional space, so if I want to figure out where I am, I'm going to need three numbers, right? Well, in this room, I would, you know, if I wanted to know where my hand was right here, I would probably want an x, y, and z coordinate because this is a rectangular room and it's easy to maybe put an origin down there in the corner. Are there any times where you want to know where you are on a sphere? Because a sphere would be the 3D analog to a cube, and spherical coordinates are the, the uh, angular analog to x, y, z uh, Cartesian coordinates. Is there any time you really want to know where you were on a sphere? Think about it. How about that? Every time you use GPS, you're, if you're figuring out where you are on a sphere, and yeah, I know the Earth isn't exactly a sphere, but it's awfully close. So when you, we routinely want to know where we are on, a, on the surface of a sphere. We routinely use spherical coordinates, whether you think about it or not. It's true. Hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.